Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to recreate this Stranger Things title screen look in Adobe Photoshop and apply it to your own text or logo. I'm a huge fan of the show and with season 2 right around the corner I thought it would be appropriate to make a tutorial based on this beautiful opening sequence. Now before we start I just want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I personally use Squarespace to host and create my websites and I highly recommend it to anyone looking to get a website or an online portfolio. Make sure you stick around to get 10% off your first Squarespace order. Alright, so we're going to start by creating a new Photoshop document. Let's make it 3000 by 3000 pixels. You can set the resolution to 72 pixels per inch and the color mode to RGB. Now for this effect I suggest sticking to a black background or if you want to add some color make sure it's really dark to help the lighting effect stand out. The whole effect will look kind of washed up if you're using a light background. So I'm just going to set it to black and hit OK. Next you can either import a vector logo or type in your text directly into Photoshop. To do that just press T to bring up the type tool and then click on your canvas and type in your text. I'm just going to write the word tutorial. You can use any font you want for this. Just try and pick something with a bit of weight to it since we're going to be creating a stroke around the text and it might look a bit messy on a very thin script font for example. Now for those of you who want to use a similar typeface as the one used in the intro, you can go ahead and download a font called Benguiad Bold. I'm not exactly sure how it's pronounced but I'll leave a link in the video description. This style of font was really popular in the horror genre in the 70s and 80s. It was used for movie posters and Stephen King book covers for example, so it makes total sense that they would use some kind of variation of this font for the intro of the show. Alright, now I'm just going to resize my text by pressing Command T or Control T on PC to bring up the free transform tool. And I'm going to drag these corners out while holding down Shift to scale everything up proportionally. Then I'll hit Enter and center my text with the canvas using these smart guides to help out. Now I'm just going to cheat a little bit and move this to the right so visually it looks more balanced. So now that we have our text ready we can go ahead and start creating the effect. I'll select my text layer and then go down here to the layer styles and select stroke. Then I'll set the size to 7 pixels. And I'll set the position to outside and leave the blend mode to normal and 100% opacity and then set the fill color to white and hit OK. Then I'll bring the fill value down to zero so that I'm left only with the outline of the text and none of the fill color. Now I'm just going to make a copy of my text layer by selecting the layer and then pressing Command J or Control J on PC. And I'll just keep this one as a backup in case I want to go back and change anything later on. So I'll rename it to Backup and make it invisible by clicking this little eye. So I can only see this text layer here. Next I'm going to go down here and create a new layer. And then make sure it sits right above my text layer. And then select both layers by holding down shift and right click and select merge layers. I'm going to rename this layer text. Then I'm going to click on this icon down here to create a layer mask. Now the way layer masks work is that anytime you apply white it reveals whatever's on the layer. On the opposite, applying black will hide the contents of the layer. And as you can see the layer mask is filled with white so everything's visible. Now we're going to hide some parts of our word so that some portions of it are more visible than others. So I'll make sure that I have my layer mask selected and then I'll bring up the brush tool by pressing B. Then make sure you have black selected as your foreground color and white as the background color. You can then select the brush you want by right clicking on your canvas. So go ahead and pick one of these soft brown brushes. If you want to quickly change your brush diameter you can hold down Ctrl and Alt and then press the left mouse button on your canvas to drag your cursor left and right and adjust the width. So this is a good size. Now I don't want to completely erase parts of my text, I just want some parts to be less visible. So I'm going to set the brush opacity to 80%. Now remember, all these areas where I apply black with my brush will be hidden. Now if you want to go over some parts you previously erased and make them more visible again, you can go ahead and apply some white instead of black. 
so just press X on your keyboard to quickly toggle between your foreground and background color. Alright, now we can go ahead and duplicate this layer by pressing Command or Control J, and we'll blur this layer out a little bit. So let's go to Filter up here, and then go to Blur, and select Gaussian Blur. And we'll set the radius to 5 pixels, and hit OK. Again, let's duplicate this layer by pressing Command J or Control J on PC, and blur this one out even more. So let's go back to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and this time we'll set the radius to 15 pixels. And then repeat the process one last time, so duplicate this layer, go to Gaussian Blur, and this time set it to 30 pixels. Alright, now let's add in some color. So I'm just going to select this last blurred layer up here and create a new layer right above it by clicking on the new layer icon down here. And I'm going to name this layer color. Now you can use any color you want for this or even use a gradient between a few different colors, but I'm going to pick something close to the red that was used for the intro of the show. So I'll go ahead and fill this layer by hitting shift and backspace to bring up the fill options. Now for the contents, I'll select color and use this red with the hex value EE312A and then hit OK. Then we can go to the blending modes up here and select multiply. Now I just want to add a bit more glow behind the text. So I'm going to create a new layer down here and place it right underneath all my text layers and I'll rename it to Glow. Then I'll take down the opacity of the layer to about 10%, and then bring up the brush tool by pressing B. Next I'll make sure that the foreground color is set to the same color as my text, so in this case it'll be EE312A. And then I'll use a wide soft brush to add in just a few spots, so that it's noticeable but still subtle. Alright, now the last thing we want to do is add in a few highlights to make everything stand out a bit more. So once again, I'll create a new layer, and I'm going to place it right above the color layer. And I'll name this one Highlights. Then I'm going to set the blending mode to Overlay, and select white as the foreground color. Now using the brush tool, I'm going to go over some parts of the text to make them pop a little bit. So now just highlight random parts of the text where you feel it's appropriate. Just try not to overdo it so there's still a good balance between the highlights and the darker parts of the text. And that's about it guys, so make sure you mess around with the colors, the glow and the highlights to figure out what you like best. Now I just want to take a second to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. With Squarespace you can create your own beautiful looking website in no time, even if you have zero web design or coding experience. They offer a huge selection of professionally designed templates which you can easily customize to make it unique. You can even get your own domain directly from Squarespace, so it's really a one-stop shop for anyone trying to step up their online presence by getting their own website, custom portfolio, or online shop. I personally created two websites using Squarespace and I'm really happy with both of them. Their platform made the whole process incredibly easy and they have great customer service to help you out if you have any questions. So if you want a free trial, make sure to click the link in the video description and you'll even get a 10% discount for your membership. Alright guys, as usual I'd really love to see what you guys do with this effect, so make sure to tag me on Instagram if you post your work over there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.